Good morning, church. It's good to be with you again this morning, and we pray that everyone is well and doing good through this storm that we're facing. Um, we're thankful that we have the Lord to look to in these times, and so what a blessing that is for us that know Christ, and so I hope that uh, everyone is doing well today. Uh, just want to say thank you for tuning in with us, maybe Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, maybe this is your first time that you have joined us. We are glad that you're with us today. Uh, also, I just want to share, you know, our governor has signed an order that it's a stay-at-home order. Uh, and so next week is, uh, is um, Resurrection Sunday. And so it'll be the first time in my life since I've been a Christian not be in the house of the Lord on Easter. But we can come to you. We will be a part of your Easter next week. And, and thankful the Lord for that, for all the technology that we have to be able to do that. It's a blessing. I pray that you are doing well, your family is doing well. And we just want to say thank you uh, for those that are continuing to supporting our church. Uh, thank you. Uh, some people have asked about their tithes and offerings. We just want to let you know you can mail them in to the church. The address is 1141 Southwest Street, Decatur, Tennessee, 38329. Uh, we will take care of that for you if you want to do that. Uh, we've talked about other, a few other things, maybe some online giving. We just haven't got that in place yet, but we're looking at it. And uh, when we do, then we'll be able to give you all the information on how to go online and be able to give. But we're glad that you're with us today and we're thankful. Uh, I just want to say, you know, as we continue to pray, uh, I know you're praying. I know you're standing on God's Word through this. Uh, but I just want to say a special thanks to all of our first, uh, first responders. Uh, we want to thank God for our nurses, our doctors, our sheriff's department, our police department, our rescue squad, our fire department. We just want to say thank you to all these that are out there on the front lines battling this. Thank you. Thank you. And we need to pray for them every day. Pray that God's protection will be upon them and just watch over them uh, uh, through this, this, this time. But again, we're thankful that you're with us today. I want to bring a message this morning entitled, Hope in the Midst of Adversity. Hope in the Midst of Adversity. Uh, let's pray. Father, this morning again, we're thankful and blessed to be able to come and just share God's Word. I don't know who's tuned in this morning, Lord, but you do. And I pray to God that uh, what is said today will be strength. It will be encouragement. It will be helpful to those that are listening this morning. Yes, we are in times like we've never been in before. But Lord, you said you would never be away from us. You'd always be with us. And so today, Father, I ask that you just take this time we are together. I ask you to anoint me, your servant. Help me to speak the words led by the Holy Spirit. And we're going to thank you for what's going to be done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Psalms 27. Psalms 27. Let's begin reading at verse number 1. We're going to read through verse number 6. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? 
When the wicked come against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumble and fall. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me. In this, I will be confident. One thing I have desire of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. For in the times of trouble, He shall hide me in His pavilion. In the secret place of His tabernacle, He shall hide me. He shall set me high up on a rock. Now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. Listen, I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. This morning, I just want to share about hope. I want to bring something into our hearts this morning that will encourage you. You know, without warning, adversity strikes. Five weeks ago, who would have known that we would be quarantined to our homes? Adversity. Hours before all this took place, most of us was going about life as norm, doing our thing and living like we were living and just going through life. One writer said it was like this, a cove of tranquility. And now many people's lives resemble a raging sea. Twelve-foot waves of emotional unrest sweeping through their minds. Winds of hurricane force tearing at their protective barrier of their heart. Had we known it was coming, would we have braced ourselves? If we had known it was coming, would we have braced ourselves? Adversity rarely announces its arrival. Instead, it attacks with fury through trials and heartaches and emotional setbacks. And most of us would have thought we would be able to go through anything, but stop and think about it. This is challenging all of us today. It's challenging every one of us as Christians as well as non-Christians. We're being challenged. But we that are Christians today thank the Lord that we have someone to lean on, and that's Christ. And that's Jesus. Adversity can get our attention. When adversity comes, we're forced to face problems and pressures that are too big for us to solve. Can I tell you, we can't solve this problem. We thank God that we have those in leadership that are looking and trying to do something to be able to bring a vaccine for this virus. But we know who we can depend on, and that's Christ. Who saw this coming? Who saw this coming? I don't think any man saw this coming, but we know that God saw this. In fact, He knew it was coming before it ever came. See, God can and will and does get our attention. Maybe this time that God is, uh, I will say this, is uh, He the author of this? No, but I believe He's allowing something to take place here. I believe He's allowing us to realize that He's still God. He's still on the throne. And He's in charge. If you step back about five weeks ago or maybe two months ago or even three months ago, what was your life like? Going to work, kids to school, just the normal thing, going through life, living, thinking, man, it's good. And then all of a sudden, within a matter of weeks, everyone's life is turned upside down. During this time, I believe God has brought this into our lives for purposes like getting us back to the Word. How strong was God's Word in your life before this came? I went to church, you know, I, I listened to the preacher, you know, he read verses. I prayed that, that that wasn't, but has it changed now? Has the Word become more important to you? What about prayer? How important was prayer before all this? Now has it caused you to find your secret place and get along with the Lord and pray? Let me ask another question. Has it brought him, you back to Him? Maybe you weren't living the way you should have been living, but maybe through all of this that we are facing, maybe the Lord is just orchestrating some, some things in our lives to get us back to Him. God knows how to get our attention. See, because I believe before all this take, took place, 
I believe we had our goals and we were doing things, what we wanted to do and how we wanted to do it and when we wanted to do it. And even in our relationships, you know, we were just living life and thinking everything is good. Well, let me just say God is good and God doesn't change. But I believe one thing, God is seeing where He was in our lives. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 6.33, it says this, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Was God first and foremost in your life? See, adversity comes to everyone. We all have faced it. We've all been through it. We're all going through this. But notice one thing in that there, this verse gives us two conditions. Meaning this, a condition and a guarantee. It gives us a condition and a guarantee. Notice the condition. What is the condition for God's blessings? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Are we, were we doing that before? And I pray we're doing it now. Then God gives us a guarantee. Notice the guarantee. What's the guarantee, Pastor? His provisions. What did He say? All these things should be added unto you. If, what? If we seek Him and put Him first in our lives. I pray this has been a wake-up call to all of us. Whether it's pastors or, or teachers or just lay people in the church, worship leaders, children pastors, youth pastors, I pray, and just in general people coming to church, I pray this has been a wake-up call for us. Because in the midst of all this adversity, can I tell you, we can still find hope. Where does our hope come from? It comes from Jesus. He is our hope today. In Psalms 27, let's begin looking at three points this morning. Number one, confidence in the Lord who provides us hope. Confidence in the Lord who provides us hope. Notice this, the reading of the word. The Lord is my light and my salvation for whom I fear. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And when the wicked come against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumble and fall. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. Notice, confidence in the Lord who provides hope. See, I believe God provides us hope in anything that we face. Hope is a powerful thing. To define the word hope means a feeling of expectation and a desire of a certain thing to happen. Hope. See, the world looks at hope and they say, well, maybe, maybe not. That's kind of the hope of the world. But we that are Christians, the biblical teaching has a different side of hope. Listen to what Jeremiah 17, 7 says. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Notice, Jeremiah says those that trust in the Lord and the hope, those hope the Lord is. Today we can turn to Him. Who, those who trust in the Lord will not be afraid or anxious of any life circumstances because we have our roots deep in God. Hope is a deep, settling confidence that God will keep and honor His Word. Notice verse 1. Notice here in David's words, The Lord is my light, my salvation, for whom I fear. The Lord is the strength of my life. David begins this psalm by declaring a personal uh, in faith in the Lord. Notice the use of the word my. Let's go back and read it again. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation, and the Lord is my strength. David declares his personal relationship with God. He's, de he's declaring my, he's declaring what he, he means. My light, my salvation, my strength comes from who? From the Lord. Where does your light come from? Where does your salvation come from? Where does your strength come from? The same one that David depended on is the same one we depend on. Notice the word says, the Lord is my light. God is the only one who delivers us from darkness. No one can deliver you from darkness. No one can deliver us from this. Now we may, hopefully with man's wisdom that God has given, find a vaccine. But you know what? 
God can intervene. The church that can rise up and be the church of today and begin to pray and, and intercede and seek God. Listen, God can just come and do a mighty work. We talked about 2 Chronicles 7.14. There is a condition for the church to meet and then God will respond. He said, I'll heal your land if you do what I ask you to do. See, God is light. This is what the Word says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. For He has rescued us from the domain of darkness, dominion of darkness, and brought us into the kingdom of the Son He loves. To know that God has rescued us. He says, He is my salvation. Salvation, God delivers His people from damnation. He is my salvation. Thank God we have someone to lean on. We don't look to man, but we look unto the author and the finisher, who is Jesus. John 5, 24 says, Most surely I say to you, he who hears my words and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into the judgment, but has passed from death unto life. We have passed from death unto life, meaning we have now got life, and our life is not in ourselves, but in Christ. Because Christ now lives in those that have surrendered their lives to Jesus. So we can say the Lord is my salvation. Notice he said this, the Lord is my strength. Strength, God delivers his people from defeat. This is not a defeat for us. We should be stronger today than we were yesterday. We should be stronger in this storm that we're facing because we know things will come. The Bible tells us, it's been telling us for a long time, things are going to happen. Things are going to change. It's not always going to be like we think it should be. But things are going to change. And guess what? They are changing. Notice what Paul said, but thanks be to God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have victory today through Jesus. He is our strength. He is the one we look to. These characteristics Ristics of God will give us hope in the midst of adversity. He is my light. He is our salvation. And He is our strength. It's not time for us to fear. It's not time for us to worry. Confidence in what the Lord will do. Notice what the Word says. When the wicked comes against me and eat my flesh and my enemies, my foes, they stumble and fall. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me. In this, I will be confident. Confidence in what? Confidence in the Lord. David declared his hope in the Lord for what God had done for him in the past. See, what's God done for us in the past? How many storms had he brought you through? How many battles have you gone through that he didn't lead you through it? See, God didn't fail David. And can I tell you, God's not going to fail you and I in these times. God's not going to fail us because the Word says he'll be with us. Always, even to the end. I believe this. See, I believe one thing. Because see, the one thing that is battling and, and tormenting a lot of people today is fear. People are living in fear. They, they don't know what to do. Uh, people have lost their jobs. It's, you know, it's affecting so many people. Who would ever have thought we would be here? But can I tell you, where was your trust before this started? And where's your trust today? Where was your hope before this? Where's your hope today? I pray that it's in Christ. Even if the enemy may, made a, a sudden attack, I believe this was a sudden attack that we didn't see coming, but no matter what the tactic may be, can I tell you, the enemy cannot defeat us. The enemy can't defeat us. Just like David. The enemy didn't defeat David in his situations that he was facing right here. This adversity he was in, the enemy didn't defeat him. He won't defeat us. I want you to stop. Just stop right there where you're at. Stop right now. And I want you to think of the victories that God has brought you through. How many mountains has He moved out of your life? How many storms has He spoke to and peace came? <laughs> so many we can't even count them. And can I tell you, this is a storm. This is a battle. Well, Pastor, we've never been here before. You're right. But you know what? He said, whatever we go through, He would go with us. That we have confidence in who? Who is your confidence in? Where was your confidence before this? Was it in your bank account? Of, Thank God, I'm not against that. Was your banking, was your confidence in your job? Was it, was it you know, it, was it it's just in the, the, the general life, you know, we got everything going good. Was that where your confidence was? Or was your confidence in Jesus? The time He has... 
came through so many battles. I can look back over my life and just think about the time that God brought me through when I didn't know what we were going to do and how this was going to be met. But all of a sudden, God showed up. Can I just tell you, but God will show up every time. When we cry out to Him, He will come to our rescue. If God be for us, who can be against us? Listen, this is, this is not a time to run in fear, but it's a time to stand strong and put your confidence, as David said, in the Lord. Our commitment, second point, our commitment to the Lord provides hope. Listen what he says in verse 4. It says, one thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek. I talked about seeking the last few weeks. Seeking the Lord. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. David had a passion. His passion was to be near God. To be close to the Lord. David was the apple of God's eye. He said that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Right now, we're not able to come together in our sanctuary and gather together, but technology has allowed us to come into your home, and that's a good thing. Pastors are, you know, we're all going through this. We're trying to figure out what things needs to be done and how to do things because we've never been this road. We've never been down this path in life, and so we, we're just trying to do what we can to make sure we keep ourselves close and knit, and so thank God that we can do this. And, we put out posts and all of our staff is, is trying to get an encouraging word. So can I say, we're, we're all going through this. Every church, every pastor, we're all going through this thing. But we're not going through it alone. We still have each other. We can still call one another and I pray that you do. I hope that you're taking time to, to call someone every day and just talk to them. Just encourage them. Maybe two or three. Not just ones in church, but people around you. Just encourage them. This is a time for the church to rise up. It's not a time for the church to fall apart. It's a time for the church to become stronger and place our hope and our confidence in God because God's going to bring us through. God is going to bring us through this. I believe that with all of my heart. I believe it's through this time that we can draw closer to the Lord. I pray that you have that time with Him every day. Having that quiet time and some of you say, quiet time, Pastor. My kids are at home, so it's not quiet time. Well, finding that quiet time is important. And I pray that you are. I believe it's vitally for us in this hour. What a limited resources we have been given as we commit ourselves to the Lord. God has given us an invitation. What resources He has given us. He has given us His Word to us. How strong and how important is God's Word to you today? Are you in the Word of God? Because if you're not in the Word, then you're going to struggle. Are you praying every day? Because this, this, this storm may last a little longer than maybe we think. It may last longer than a week or two weeks or a month. Listen, church. I pray that your confidence and your hope is in Christ. Get yourself in the Word of God. Take the time every day to find that quiet place with God and pray. Mom's dad... What a vital time you have to spend with your kids. You think about it. Many times parents, they put their children's being taught by their children's pastor or their youth pastor. Now, many are doing Facebook with children and teenagers, and that's great. Our, our youth pastor is, and it's wonderful. And you know, I think it's important. But how important is you, you parents to step up to the plate and begin to say, hey, Having that family time together, devotional time together, spending time together. What a limited resources we have been given as we commit ourselves to the Lord. God has given us His invitation. What is that invitation? In these moments, He says, you know what He said in 11, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28? He says, come to me. Wow. We should be falling apart. We should be coming to Him. He said, come to me, all you are laboring of heavy laden, and I will give you what we're looking for. Everybody's looking for is rest. That word rest means peace. I'll give you peace. Peace in the midst of adversity. Wow. That's the God we serve. Understanding how important it is. He said, you bring me your burdens. You bring me your worries. You bring me your anxieties. You bring me your fears. And can I tell you, and you can give them to me. And then in return, I'm going to give you 
rest. I'll give you peace. That is having confidence in the Lord. Our commitment to the Lord will provide hope in the days of adversity. And we can have confidence that He will see to our ever need being met. Final point. In time of adversity, God has a special place for you. Notice what the Bible says in verse number 5. For in the time of trouble, He shall hide me in His pavilion. In the secret place of His tabernacle, He shall hide me. He shall set me high up on a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Wow. Notice David's words in time of trouble. Well, we could say we're probably in that moment right now, days of trouble. Times are not like they used to be. Times have changed. Quarantine inside our homes and not able to do what we normally would do. Wow. But can I say this? In time of adversity, God has a special place for you and I. That special place is to come into His presence. Notice the word pavilion. Notice what He said. He shall hide me in His pavilion. I did a little research on that pavilion. And this is, this is you've got to get a mental picture of this place or this pavilion that David is referring to. Uh, yeah, a pavilion is a shelter. But listen to this. The king's pavilion was a tent placed in the middle of the army's camp. The king's pavilion was placed in the center of the camp. The tent was surrounded by an army of powerful soldiers. And all the hosts of the army encamped about the king's pavilion. Meaning this, that was the safest place to be. <laughs> right in the center of the camp. Can I tell you, God's got us in the center of his camp today. In fact, Psalms 34, 7 says, The angel of the Lord encamps about all, encamps all around those who fear him and deliver them. The angel of the Lord encamps around us. Not only does to those who fear him, but he delivers them. What a powerful thought. God has appointed his angels to protect and rescue his saints from harm. God assures of his sheltering place, allows us to weather the storms of life because he's made provisions as a pavilion shelters those. This was the confidence that the three Hebrew boys had, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Man, we know that story. We know what it said, but I want you to listen to what they said to the king. It says this, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Notice what he said. These guys understood who God was. And God had a place for them in his pavilion, in the center to bring protection. Let's go on. And it says, And he will deliver us from the hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the golden image which you have set up. Shadrach and Meshach understood this in the center, in the place where there is safety, there is protection. Let me go on and read a little bit further. And it says that then the king Nebuchadnezzar was astonished as he rose in haste and spoke. They bound up these three boys cranked up the furnace a little, seven times hotter, and cast them in this furnace. And this is where Nebuchadnezzar said, and the king was astonished as he rose and hastened, and he looked and he asked his counselors, he said, did we not cast three bound men into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, true, O king, look, look. He answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they all not burned or hurt. 
And the form of the fourth looks like the Son of God. Hallelujah. Here's three boys. Stood faithful with God. Stayed true to God through everything that they were facing. Through this adversity that they were facing. Can I tell you? They didn't put their hope in man. They put their hope in God. And God made protect, protection for them. He protected them in this furnace of life that they were facing. Can I tell you the same way with us? God will protect us. The Bible tells us our life is hid with Christ. Our life is hid in Christ. If your life is in Christ today, you are hid in Him. He is our everything. With all this that is going on today, we who know Jesus Christ as our Savior, we have a pavilion. We can run to Him. That's Jesus. Paul said, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into the grace, this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Only in Christ. Only we can look to Him and guess what? Through all that God has provided through His Son, that today we can run and we can find Christ and He can bring our protection. The one thing about David, David was going to worship. Notice verse 6. This is one of my favorite part of this verse. And now my head shall be lifted up above the enemies all around me. Therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy in this tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. David was a worshiper. And David was going to take time in the midst of his adversity because he put his hope, his confidence in God to see him through. Can I tell you, we put our hope and our confidence not only in God, but in Jesus Christ and what he has done for you and I. I pray today you know this Jesus. I pray today that you know Christ as your Lord and your Savior. If you don't, then can I tell you, He's asking you to come to Him. Take the time today to find Jesus. And let Him be the joy that, that you can have in your life. David said, I'm going to sing. I am going to sing praises to the Lord. Listen, this is not a time for us to be gloom and despair. This is a time of joy. You say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe you got everything good and everything's going well. No, I'm just like you in the same boat. I've got things that's you know, knocking on my doors and things that are happening. Can I tell you, but you know what? I don't put my confidence in what I don't see or what I do see. Let me say that. What I do see, but I put my confidence in what I don't see. My confidence is in Christ. My hope is in Christ today. Not in the system, but my hope is in Jesus. And Jesus will not fail. He didn't fail David. He didn't let David down. Man, you think about David was going through all this adversity in his life, all these situations, and can I tell you, I will sing. Are you still singing? Are you still singing the praises of God? Are you still worshiping God in these times? Listen, don't stop. That's a part of your hope. That's a part of your strength that you need and I need. This is a lesson for all of us. God will bring us through this. God's going to bring us through this. I don't know how long it'll take. But it doesn't matter how long it takes. God said, I will go every step with you. Every step, He said, I'll take with you. And I, I, just, I just put my faith in this book and in God and in Christ that He can't lie. People that don't know Jesus, I really don't know how they're going to deal with, with all this happening. That's the reason why the Bible says, you know what? Trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. Put your trust in Him. Put your faith in God. Look to Jesus. He, he, he cares. I mean, God allowed His only begotten Son to be broken and bruised. Give His life to be beaten within an inch of His life. For you and for I to have hope. Hope in who? Hope in what Christ has done for me and for you. In the midst of what we face, we still have hope. We have a deep settled confidence that whatever comes, whatever comes, God's going to see us through it. Fear is not going to win this battle. 
Fear is not going to win. Faith, hope, confidence, trust, that's going to win. And Jesus said, you know what? I'm all those and so much more. Just come to me. And allow me to just put my covering. See, you can go into that pavilion of Christ. Go out right in the center where He's at. Allow Him just to clothe you. Minister to your need. If you're hurting, He says, come to me. If you're battling this fear and don't know what to do, He says, come to me. Let me encourage you. Let me just encourage you to do one, two things. Number one, to reaffirm your hope in the Lord. This is how. By renewing your commitment with God. Maybe you've gotten away from God. Maybe you're not where you need to be with Christ. Maybe you're not in fellowship with Him. He hasn't begun yet. He's still there. Let just let the walls be torn down. Come back to God and put your hope in Christ and hope in God. This world will fade away one day. This world will be gone one day. But you know what? We that know Christ, we won't see that. We won't be a part of that. So I'm encouraging you, I'm reaffirming you this morning. Look, make your commitment. Take, your, take yourself to Christ and just bow before Him. Make an altar where you're at. Maybe in your living room, maybe in your bedroom, maybe in your kitchen. I don't know where you're at. But wherever you're at, just make an altar and call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon Jesus. And He will come to your rescue. Because He is true to what He said. I will never, 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 never leave you. I thank God this morning that I have hope in the Lord. My son is a firefighter and, and uh, every day I pray for him. He's out there among those that's facing this. We've got people in our church that are nurses that are out on the front line. Man, I, I've been standing in faith for them, praying for them, the protection of their families. Listen, yeah. This is, not, this is not something that we should just sweep on the rug, but it's something not to let our not let fear overcome us, but place your hope and your trust in God. And God will help you through. He will show you what to do. When, when you don't know what to do, you can turn to Him and He will be there for you tonight. That's a part of His promise. And let me just encourage you, in these times like this, when you feel down, find you a song. Find you a worship song. Go back and just... There's so many out there and just find you that song. I was doing this message and I was just thinking about that song, Raise a Hallelujah. You know, sing in the midst of my storms. You know, I'm going to sing it louder. Right now we as the body of Christ need to just sing loud today. Because Jesus is more real than, than to me than He's been in a long time. More real to me than, than you know, when we came to Decatur 15 years ago, God was good then. He was real, but you know, He's more real to me right here in the middle of this adversity that we all are facing. Can I tell you, He's more real to me and, and I can look to Him more than I've ever looked to Him because you, He said, I'm, I'm not going to walk away from you, Keith. I'm going to be with you. And that's the promise that we can put our hope in is Jesus. That's the promise. Let's pray. Father, Today, we thank you for this time that we've been able to share with our church family and those. I pray, Lord, that the word has spoken to them. I pray it has uplifted them and encouraged them that we can find hope in the midst of adversity. Our hope is not found in man, but our hope is found in Jesus Christ. That we can put all of our confidence in God. And knowing God won't let us down, He will bring us through this. He is for us and not against us. And so, Father, I pray today there may be one or two that don't know You today. That are struggling and have a, 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 a surmounting amount of fear that is gripping their heart and their life. And I tell you, we can all run to Jesus because He gives us a clear invitation. He says, come to me. Just come to me. Give your heart to Christ today. Give your life to Jesus. And you'll never regret it.